Aloha and welcome to another Hawaiian quilting video. My name is Sissy and I'm from the Poakalani Hawaiian quilting family. And in this video, I'm going to show you needle turn applique. And what is needle turn applique? Well, if you have your cutout piece, we're going to turn that raw edge under right into the basting line and we're going to actually sew the top piece to the backing and that's going to be your permanent stitch. And I'm going to show you points and valleys and how to do your circular designs. And uh, all you need is patience and time and practice. And we're going to make this as easy and simple as possible. And I know you can do it. So let's get started. So let's open our cutout piece and I just want to explain a few things about the design. Now this is a breadfruit design, we also call it the ulu pattern and it is a favorite for beginners and the reason why is you have all these points and valleys and circles to practice on. And when you get your pattern and your piece, there are a few things I just want to show you. The circular area or the rounded area or the middle area of your quilt is what we call the center. Anything that comes out from that center is what we call the branches. And we're going to start on a long edge. You never want to start in a point or a valley. And uh, we're going to take it slow and we're going to take it easy. So besides your basted piece, we're also going to need your needles. And uh, I did ask for assorted needles, but many of you who probably already know how to applique or how to quilt, you're probably comfortable with your needle. And please don't change. If you're comfortable with it, please stay with it. For those of you who are new to needle turn applique, what I want you to do is test out the different sharp needles, the different sizes. Find what you're comfortable with. I actually use a number seven quilting needle and I use it for basting, for applique, and for quilting. It's the same uh, size needle that my mom used and I still do that today. You're also going to need your thread. Remember to use the thread that is the same color as your pattern and maybe clippers to clip your um, threads. And what I want you to do is with your needle and your thread I actually want you to thread about five needles and I want you to make it arm's length and uh, so you don't spend half your time kind of pulling it up when you're doing needle turn applique. So I've got my piece, I've got my thread needle, uh, my ne I should say my needle threaded and uh, let's get started. So we're going to find that edge, you want to find that long edge to get started. And uh, I just want to show you the position of your hand. Some people actually like to sew on the table. And I know some people actually applique on their knee. But I want to show you how to use your hand. So we're going to learn how to applique basically on your index finger or even your middle finger. So I just want you to turn your hand up. And whether you're right hand or left hand, it doesn't matter. The process is still the same. Uh, and just to explain about left hand, right handed, I'm actually left handed, but I applique in a right hand direction. And uh, after teaching for many years, I found out that after observing students, I found out that right handed people actually, most of them applique in a counterclockwise direction and left handed clockwise direction. But you can do whatever you're comfortable with. And so let's get started. So we've got to have our hand, we're going to open our palm, and we're going to stick our hand right under that area that we're going to want to start. And uh, it's going to rest actually on my index finger, finger or my middle finger. So that's all it looks like. My palm is right under there. I'm just going to gather a little bit of my fabric, and then we're ready to start the needle turn applique. We just switched the cameras so we get a closer view of the technique. And so you should have your needle and you should have your thread. For instruction purposes, I'm actually going to be using a red thread. 
So what you want to do, you also want to put a knot at the end of your thread, but don't make your tail too long. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to tuck. In the previous video, we actually did the basting, and I said about a quarter inch in, and uh, that's so we can tuck right into the basting line. So I'm going to put my hand under the fabric. It's now basically on my index finger, and we're going to do some tucking. You want to take the tip of your needle, and you want to tuck it right into the basting line, that raw edge right into the basting line and you're going to drag it with the side of your needle and you're going to tuck out to where your fingers are that's holding the needle, where your hand's holding the needle. So it's a tuck and drag. And then you can use your thumb to help thumb press the fold under. And there you go. So if you baste it really well, that basting line is going to hold your tuck under and it's going to shape your design for you. If you went too far in, you would have to shape it yourself. If your basing line came too far out, you would have actually had to take out the basing line to start. So let's go again. We're going to take that edge. We're going to tuck it right into the basing line, drag it under, and there you go. So let's do our first stitch. We're going to go in between your back piece and your top piece and we're going to hide our knot in between the layers. So you're going to come up on almost on the folded edge, right at the edge there. Push it through and you see your tail? You're just going to tuck it right under there. And we're ready to make our first stitch. Now because you're on a long edge, you actually can tuck about an inch and you can do four to five stitches. And just leave it there, use your thumb, and you want to get your thumb as close to where your stitch came out. So let's do our first stitch. This is where you came out. You want to go right next to the stitch, but pick up your back piece. Do not pick up your folded or the top piece. So you're going to come under and you're going to go right there next to that stitch that you came out. Pick up your bottom piece and I'm going to put my thumb right there to help make the stitch a little smaller. And there is your first applique stitch. I'm going to do a couple more. This is where you came out. Go right next to that stitch, but on the background fabric. Pick up your fabric. Here's my thumb right there, and I'm going to push up, and it's about an eighth of an inch. And we're going to go again. This is where I came out. Go under, right next to it. Pick up your bottom fabric and come up on the folded edge. You don't want to come out too far, and you're going to have a longer stitch in this direction. If you go too far in, you're going to see your stitch in that direction. So you're just catching the folded edge. So again, right next to that last stitch, pick up the background fabric and you can use your thumb to help cut off the stitch and make it smaller. And then, of course, you just keep going and you're probably going to need a thousand of these stitches. And you're going to pick up a rhythm you're going to pick up a consistency. For those of you who are just starting to do needle turn applique, uh, you might not be happy with your initial stitches, but in our classes, we tell our beginner students, we don't want you to take any of the stitches out. You just continue, just keep going, and I can promise you that when you get to your end, when you come back around, you're going to be really happy with the stitches you made. It just takes time and it just takes practice to learn this technique. And you could do, I think I did like, oh, more than five stitches. Again, you're just going to tuck it right there, smooth it out, use your thumb, and we're going to keep going. And that's how we do needle turn applique. And it's just very small stitches. And I want to see if we can turn it over. And there you go. I think you can see all the stitches here that we made. And small and consistent. And you should be good. And so in the next step, I'm actually going to show you how to do a point. Okay, so I'm just going to keep continuing to applique here. There you go. 
our quilters love to, um, you know, you get so good at doing this that you're not going to have to concentrate so hard in making these stitches. And we're just going to keep going. And we're going to get into the point. So when you get to a place where you're going to come to a point, what I do is I, I just tuck that whole point under. I'm just going to point it under. And then I'm just going to hold it down. And I'm going to sew all the way to that tip. Oops, lost my thread here. You know, the Hawaiians, um, back when they first started making quilts for applique, when they did their applique, they had only one color thread, and that was white. So if you look at all the antique quilts in Hawaii, or, if, you know, anyone who has an antique Hawaiian quilt, their thread is always white. And they applique in the white thread, and they even quilted in the white thread. And their stitches were absolutely amazing. But now that we have so many different color threads and fabrics, so sometimes we match it. There are some people that want to do that antique look, and they will still use that white thread. Okay, so what you want to do is we're coming very close to our point here. And uh, I'm just going to go to like the second to the last stitch from that point. And you want to get that edge as much as possible because this final point, this final stitch is actually going to be your new point. So I'm going to come up here. Now there are some people who actually, um, if you're doing a pineapple, you're going to have very thin points and you're going to have this little excess here. Those you can actually snip off. I don't have much here, so I'm just going to tuck that under. So I just turned my piece around and we're going to do the point. So this last stitch here is going to be my new point. And you can either use your fingers or you can use your needle. You're just going to tuck that tip right under your last point and we're just going to miter it. And then I like to use my finger at this point. I'm just going to take this tuck, I'm going to tuck down into my, the opposite end of my leaf. There, there's my point, and you want to just kind of like pull back on this thread, and there's your sharp point. And so we're going to just sew that tip down at the tip, push it through, ta-da, there's your point. And you notice that we're going into our valley. So we're just going to start tucking the other edge. Again, I'm on a long edge, so I can tuck about an inch. I'm going to go ahead and really get that point down, and I'm going to start coming down the other edge. There you go. Okay, so we're going into the valleys. Now, just a few tips on valleys. There's a lot of people who, when they get into these inner corners, they're going to use clippers, and they're going to really clip it there. But in uh, for Hawaiian needle turn applique, we don't clip. If you look again at Hawaiian quilts, our inner corners are all rounded. It's not sharp. Uh, it's just the way we do it. And uh, if you notice, I don't use any glue, any freezer paper, and uh, we just keep going. So when you get into a valley, what you want to do is you want to, when you get closer, just tuck all the way from that inner corner and just tuck that edge under. And you see how smooth it is. And then we can keep going and doing this inner corner. You have to remember you need to tuck your one eighth, especially when you're in your valley, because while you're sewing into your valley and tucking your one eighth, <clears throat> what's actually going to happen is there's going to be less of a tuck when you get in here. So just do your one eighth here. If you don't tuck enough in this area, you're gonna have less to tuck there. So stay with that one eighth tuck and we're just gonna keep going as far as possible. And I'm gonna go all the way into that very inner corner 
as much as possible and so we can show you how to do the other side we're in just sew it down just make sure that tuck is there go as far down as you can and so I'm going to turn my piece again and now I'm going to start tucking my other edge so I'm just going to tuck it there you can see it and then manipulate the needle and there you go it's all under so remember always tuck about an inch half inch from where you're sewing and then I have my rounded valley and just tuck it in there and if you're not comfortable you know you can just go ahead and just do two three stitches there and uh, I know some people who do a chicken feet stitch in that inner corner and there you go and there's your valley so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to thread another needle and we're going to learn how to do these round circles okay so I'm gonna just leave this here and let's get started so the curved sections of your applique uh, you might not be able to tuck about an inch and then sew 45 stitches this is a little different it's not hard all you're going to do is start your needle make your knot and what you do is a tuck sew tuck sew because you can't make as many stitches as you can so you just have to be careful that you're going to do a shorter tuck and just keep doing a tuck and a sew so you get that shape and you notice that I don't always use my needle I'll actually use my fingers and that works too as long as you get that tuck under and we'll do the curve we're trying to curve this whole piece and then we just keep going and just you keep turning make sure you're getting that curve you see how we're getting that curve and we just keep going not too hard isn't this simple I said I wanted to make this as simple as possible and and you're probably asking well okay I'm almost done with my whole needle how do I go ahead and end it well there's no fancy step in ending you just bring it to the back like this I like to pick up uh, on the applique where the applique is just gonna pick up a little of the th fabric and I'm just gonna take my thread twirl it three times push it through and there's your knot and then all you have to do is go ahead and snip it close and there you go and that's it and that's needle turn applique wow so how did you do with your needle turn applique i hope it wasn't too difficult i'm trying to make it as easy as possible all it takes is time patience and a lot of practice so if uh, you're finished actually people always ask how long is it going to take me to finish my applique and i know people who can do it in a day and some people a couple days some a little longer some even three weeks it's up to you I always suggest to our quilters maybe you should take maybe an hour a day out of your time and every day that one hour just work on your applique and remember I told you to thread four to five needles why don't every day you thread four to five needles and you do those needles and you'll find out how further along you're getting in your applique piece so once it's all done what do you do take out all your basting lines and there you go this is all the applique and uh, you just need to take out the basting and then you're going to be ready for quilting and that's going to be in my next video and you know I've only done two videos so far and I have to tell you I love teaching it's my passion especially Hawaiian quilting and I want to share this with you I want to teach you I want you to make the best quilt you can ever make and um, 
If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments. If uh, you want to visit my other videos, the first two, it's also, there's a link in the description box. And uh, for the next step, again, we're going to do Hawaiian quilting. And we're going to show you how to take your top piece. We're going to show you how to take your batting and your backing. And we're going to sandwich it all together. And I even have a sample here. And you're going to need your 14 inch quilting hoop. And we have it here on how you're going to get started. And that's in the next video. But uh, I hope you had a great time because I really had a wonderful time teaching you. And uh, I hope to do more videos than just two or three. I want you to meet my quilting family. I want to show stories about all the quilts that we have done. But until then, I just want to say malama poro, which means take care. And always remember to quilt with aloha.